everyone, we are back on the M18, and it's been a while. What we're going to do now is prepare the valves for reassembly. Now we've gone through, and on previous videos, you have seen where we've, we've lapped in the valves. And what that's going to do is it's going to change... Insert this in here... It's going to change the clearance between the uh, the lifter and the valve right here, because we're we're basically we're changing this seat a little bit, just a little. So what I've done is I've bolted the jugs back on and torqued them down, and then I um, came through with a feeler gauge and just checked what the clearances were. Before I did that though, just to be clear, I've taken it to the piston ring filer and just faced it square. You can see how it has a little bit of a freshly cut look to it. Just to get the mushroomed end off, you know, make sure to make sure this was a actually a flat surface again. So you can see a little bit of rubbing marks on there where I just grazed it with the uh, the piston ring file or just to square up this edge here so that when we're looking at it in this orientation, this is flat or perpendicular to this surface. The valve clearances, and we'll go over that real quick. Uh, what we originally saw for valve clearances, and I'm glad I kept paperwork because it's been like, no joke, it's probably been a, a year and a half since I've even touched this engine. So, on cylinder number two, which is this cylinder here, it's, the jugs are marked with the two, on this cylinder, we had an intake clearance of five thousandths, and I checked this one, and after we lapped the valve, and then lightly faced the valve stem we're we're still back at five thousand so i've marked it next to the jug here and just put a check mark because it's good um, our clearance specs for the intake are three thousandths to six thousandths of an inch so on the intake we're good for this side the exhaust on this side this will be the one valve that I actually show us getting the clearance back out of. The exhaust clearance on this side is five thousandths of an inch currently, and it was about four and a half. So after lapping the valve and then just facing this stem, uh, we're still way out of spec. That valve is too tight. That valve should be. Uh, about 11 to 14 thousandths of an inch. So, obviously, we've got the cylinders rotated so that they're on the compression stroke and top dead center. So, the valves have no lifter movement affecting the clearance. That's standard valve clearance setting. But when we go around and check this valve, I'll show that process again. But, before we grind this valve for clearance, I noticed something. And what I noticed is that the valve on this side, the exhaust valve over here. Yeah, so the exhaust valve on uh, cylinder number one, my clearance is in spec. It's at 12 thousandths right now, which is good. Intake checks out at 5 thousandths, so that's good. But the problem with this exhaust valve is this. We have a sloppy fitment between the guide and the valve stem. So what's, what's sloppy? What does sloppy mean? So these are, uh, these guides are 5 sixteenths guides, so they should be 312 and a half thousandths. If you look at the Kohler specs, the guide should be at 5 sixteenths, and for the intake valve, your minimum 
valve stem diameter is 310-ish uh, thousandths, and the exhaust is 308-ish thousandths. So the question would be, first of all, why do I think this is sloppy? Um, if you, or what brought my attention to that, I guess, um, if you don't know what to look for and what, what, what does sloppy even feel like? Like what made me even think that? Cause I didn't check the bore on any of this stuff. It just feels weird. And, um, so when I say feels weird, let me show you what I mean. So the valves have, uh, if you're pulling out a used valve, you can see the area of the valve where the action of the cam and the lifters pushing the valve up and down causes a, an area to, to, be, to be visibly working in that guide. There's a specific amount of lift that this lifter is going to push this valve, and you can, go, you can be really critical about it and actually move the valve to its full lifted position and then check the clearance or check the slot. I'm not going to do that. What I'm doing is I'm just pulling the valve up off the seat a little bit, giving it, you know, I'm not pulling it all the way out like that. I'm just pulling it out enough that it would show the wear area. So the wear area is inside the guide now. And then I'm just rocking the valve up and down and side to side. And this is an intake valve. And it's not bad. Um, if you look on this side, you can see, so... I'm moving that valve a tiny little bit, but you want a little bit of movement. If they're too tight, then um, when everything expands and gets hot, it'll seize in the guide. So you don't want it too tight. Here's an exhaust valve on the same side. So we got a little more, we got a little more movement out of it. But this isn't a race car, so that's okay. It's probably a little worn. But not too bad. So on this side, we have the intake valve. And we're going to move it so that it's about where it would be in the bore of the guide. And we move it back and forth. Not too bad. A little tight. Or I mean a little loose, but not too bad. This one. Let me hold it in place. This one moves quite a bit, and uh, I'll bring you in a little closer so you can see it in more detail. The other three valves aren't bad. This one here, that's a little too far. That's probably about where it would be. Actually, that's no, way further than it would be, but anyway. That's too far. It won't actually lift that high, but there. That's That's about, you know... Uh, that's about where, yeah, you can actually see the wear area on the valve. If you look in there, there's, it goes probably right about there. That valve has a lot of slop in it. If you compare that to, like, the intake right next to it. I mean, I can barely, I can move it a little, but not much. So, when we pulled these breather boxes off, or these valve covers off, I noticed a bunch of carbon buildup, a lot of heat in this area here, and it was the same on the exhaust on this side, which is not surprising because the engine wasn't really that well taken care of and had probably gotten hot. What's going to happen is, even though I've... Uh, lapped this valve and created that seat. If there's a bunch of slop in here, what's going to happen is the valve will constantly be... Actually, that's a really good way of showing how sloppy this is. That's all the way bottomed out, and it's still got that much wiggle. Compare it to this one. We got... Uh, well, the cylinder's not... I think we're actually hitting lifters right now, so you can see it's not really seated. But with the valve almost seated, so what's going to happen is when that valve comes in 
and tries to seal and shut, it's going to constantly be shifting sideways. So it'll come in, it'll go out, and then it'll come in, and then it'll slide. Then it'll come out, then it'll come in, and then it'll shift. And that constant shifting of this valve back and forth like this will erode the valve face and the seat. And, um, you know, we also have excessive clearance in here. So we're going to be consuming oil through that guide because that, that clearance is so excessive. It'll only get worse. One of the other indicators is if you look at the valve and you look at the wear pattern on the valve, you can see it's not consistent. So right here, see that brown? And then it slowly turns to a gray surface again. And then... Again, it looks brown. It's not an even contact around the whole guide, or around the whole uh, valve stem there. And it's because the valve's sitting in there and doing this. It's slowly wobbling like that as it's moving. So, what do we check? What's wrong? Is it the valve, or is it the guide? The valve itself... You can visually inspect it, and when you visually inspect it, you know, you're looking for like a ridge in here, more or less, you're feeling it. The spec for valve stem diameter is on the exhaust 308. almost 309 thousandths. So we're gonna check this in the area where it's worn. This is right about in here. Let's see, I'm not sure that's, yeah, it's all right, okay. So we've got about, 309 and a 309 and a half almost. So let's check it again. Make sure that we're getting a consistent measurement here. Always triple check your measurements, obviously. Yeah, I'd call that I'd call that 309 Point two or three, something like that. So we're we're still in we're still in spec for the valve, which means that the guide must be the problem. This complicates things a little bit because the guides are pressed in, and these guides, uh, once installed, also need a finish ream to final size the bore on the guide. Typically, you know, you would this stuff would be done by the machine shop when you have, you know, when we have the cylinders done, uh, we have it hot tanked, we have all the other stuff being done to it. But since we're doing this on a budget and we're trying to do this here without taking it out and subbing it out, and really it's just a quick refresh, uh, I have two options. One, leave it alone and let it let it wobble and let it eat the valve and then also let it consume oil. I don't like that option, especially since we put some work into the cylinders and we're putting new pistons in. So what I'm gonna try to do is replace this guide myself and ream it myself. So I will be back with an update as far as what we're gonna do about that. After we get the guide issue figured out, we will go back to the other cylinder. And of course, on this side, we'll have to double check our valve clearance. And once we ream this guide, we're gonna have to double check and make sure that our valve is still seating properly. If you ream the guide slightly off, it can cause all kinds of weird geometry issues out here on the valve seat. So we're gonna have to be very careful and hopefully we get it right. 
on this side, then the final process will be to grind the valve stem here so that we get the proper clearance here. Once that's all done, the jugs come back off and we start the full reassembly process. So hang tight. We'll keep going on it. Thank you everybody who has reached out and said that, you know, the videos for the mag are helpful. I am by no means, an, you know, an expert on these engines at all. I'm just kind of doing it in the shop when I have time. And I, I find that they're a pretty fun engine to tinker on and it's kind of cool to save them. So I'm glad you guys feel the same and thank you for watching. We will be back and we'll see what we can do with these valves. See ya.